Well, I've had a good look at all the parts, and what I'm going to do now is just go through the items that we're going to need to put them onto the Wife's Door Super Galaxy. Uh, before I do that, just a little thing that happened. There's always little problems, isn't there? And I think I'm jinxed on this particular bike. Uh, yesterday, after I got all the parts out of the box and had a good look at them, I decided I would pump the tyre up, because obviously, when they send it out, the tyre's flat. So I took it over to the shed and pumped it up to about £60 a square inch, which is fair enough because it does say on the tyre up to £85. And for these sort of bikes, you do have fairly high pressures. Anyway, suddenly I heard a, a sort of a bulging kind of sound and I looked at the tyre and there was a huge bulge in the tyre on the other side, uh, twice the size that it should have been. And I was absolutely shocked and I thought, oh my God. So I quickly went to let the tyre down and find something to poke in the valve to release the pressure. And before I could do that, there was this massive explosion right in my face, a huge bang, the biggest bang I've ever heard, I think. Scared the hell out of me. And the blooming thing exploded. And I've got the tube here to show you. This is the actual tube. As you can see, it's ripped the tube wide open and it's really scary and, and what happened obviously the tyre come off the rim somehow and um, ripped it completely open up the tube but I'll tell you what it did give me a heck of a shock now this is the tyre that was on there it's a Kenda which I think is a cheaper brand and I was a bit dubious of putting it back on again after that now it could be innocent it could be that it wasn't in the rim properly and perhaps it was my fault perhaps I should have checked it more carefully I don't know but uh, <laughs> I was a bit dubious of the tyre after that, so um, anyway, I was a bit disappointed. So I emailed Easy Bikes to tell them of my dilemma, and I said the thing exploded and nearly blew my head off. And uh, I had a phone call from Clive of Easy Bikes, and he was most concerned about this and most apologetic. And I, I said, Well, look, don't worry, it's not your fault, it's just one of those things. And uh, anyway, he said, Well, uh, I'll send you a new tube. Well, in the meantime, I wanted to get the thing going. So what I've done, I've put a, a Schwalbe tube on it, and I've also put on a, a Schwalbe uh, Delta Cruiser tyre, which is one of the better tyres. We've used these on the bikes anyway. It'll match the bike better. And I've gone over to the Presta valve, which is going to be better, because that one was a Schrader valve, and my pump normally that I carry only does the Presta valve, so it's much better having that in there. So, in a way, you know, it going off with a bang has probably done me a favour. The annoying part of it, the whole thing was that when the tower went bang, I didn't have the camera running. Uh, I finished the filming from yesterday, and I got over the shed to do it. And of course, it's always the same when when something happens. You haven't you got the camera switched off. I mean, about a year ago, I was filming. I was doing a a job on a little trolley, and I was using the angle grinder, and I set myself on fire. And typically, the camera was turned off because I thought nobody would want to see it. Uh, see myself using an angle grinder, so I turned the blooming thing off and lo and behold I set myself on fire which would have made a good video wouldn't it and the same with this tyre when it went bang but I know I mentioned it before but I'm just going to go through the bits and, and explain what we've got and what I'm going to do so let's make a start at it well obviously the first thing is the is the wheel and you've seen the wheel uh, we've showed this a few times um, you, you've got the cable coming out which goes on the right hand side of the bike and uh, there's two big nuts so obviously the, the um, quick release is no longer valid on this you've got to have it held on with some sturdy nuts um, this is the battery unit uh, and obviously it's in its cage already uh, you take the key and turn that round and then you can take the battery out of the fitting there's the like a bottle cage that you fit on the bike with the connecting wires and uh, here's the battery itself at the bottom you've got the uh, locking pin where the pin locks it onto the bike and then the two pins for the connections plus and minus and then on the top there's a little button which turns the thing on and off if you turn the, if you turn the flap up at the top you gain access to the USB port and the charging point which is a, a 42 volt I believe and then you've got the plug on there which plugs in there for charging apparently it takes about two hours to charge the battery which isn't too bad really is it so that's the battery unit this this will fit on the down tube now I've spoken with Clive at Easy Bikes about this about the possibility of putting it into the cat the pannier but what it appears is that uh, because this has got a, 
a gyroscope building the bottom which detects when the bike's moving turn the motor on let's just put that in so you can see better oops I accidentally turned it on that beep was when it turned on when you press that so I'll turn that on so the thing needs to, it shouldn't really be in an upright position and it shouldn't be lying down for the gyro to work properly it needs to be on a slight angle like that which is why you put it on that front tube now it is possible to put it in a carrier providing you can sort of keep it in this position now Clive tells me that it needs to be facing forwards and it needs to be slightly off the vertical so if I can make some device to put it in the pannier then I could do it as long as it stays in that position so I'd have to make a little fitment to put inside the pannier to do that but what I'm going to do at this stage rather than mess around with that I'm going to fit it on the bike as it's meant to be and then perhaps later on after after the wife tried the bike out and tested it a few times and it works okay I might consider then transferring it to the pannier and I'll do another video showing that in case anyone's interested so that's, that's basically it there's, there's no problem with that there are two leads on the on the carrier uh, the first one is obviously the main lead which plugs into the wheel the small lead that comes off the wheel there's a, a, a smaller thinner lead here with a cover on if you pull that cover off you can see there's a little orange three pin connector in there what that's for actually is I'll just start get through the box of bits here you've got a little throttle control here with an orange similar three pin plug and, and that fits into this little socket here you can connect it up there now for the purposes of what we're doing, I'm not going to need that. It's basically, they put that in for anybody who's controlling the wheel, or the motor should I say, anybody who's controlling the motor via a mobile phone, this gives them the option of a little throttle control to go faster or slower. But because we're not using the mobile phone, the wife's not going to use a mobile phone, she's going to use the normal Bluetooth controller with it, we won't need that so I won't be fitting it so hence this little wire won't be used at all it'll be just be tidied up out of the way also included in the kit is this little lead here every three months or so you need to charge up the battery in the Bluetooth controller that's the bit that fits on the handlebars by the way and that's what this is for obviously you could uh, plug it into any USB port you know supply the voltage or you can use the actual power thing that comes with the bike so you don't need to fit that that that's just goes in the box with the charger in that this is the bluetooth controller uh, there's nothing on the screen at the moment because it hasn't been used at all on the side you can see there's a little controller here uh, an, an accelerator or throttle control to alter the speed of the bike I will go through that later the details of that I'm just showing you what I'm going to be using now that fits on the handlebars but unfortunately because we're fitting this on a, a touring racing drop bar bike I don't think that's going to fit because the diameter of the hole in there is much too small to go on the handlebars so that's going to be a problem but it's not insurmountable we can sort that now this is a little kit that comes with it and this is an extension bar and this will enable us to fit the Bluetooth controller on the handlebars. I'll just take it out of the packet. You've got a, a little Allen key to go with it. This has got uh, adjustable sizes here so you can adjust it to fit any size of handlebar. And it's clamped on with this little Allen bolt here. Look, you can undo that and flick it round and put it round. And uh, on the top here you've got another fit in where you put the little bar in. That will fit in there. And again you tighten it up with an allen key in the appropriate position and the idea is you can fit that on your handlebars and then fit the bluetooth controller this piece will fit hopefully on there you see so you've got it in a position where you can use it so we're going to have to use that on the bike but again i'll go into that when i'm fitting it on the bike so basically that's about the kit that we're going to fit i've showed you all the bits and, and what i'm going to do with them hopefully and uh, the next thing is I'm going to wheel the bike in and we'll have a look and see what we can do right here we go folks this is the door, my wife's door super galaxy I just wheel it into the operating theatre to be electrified this super galaxy was bought around 1992 so it's almost 30 years old and it's still going strong now uh, I'm just going to show you briefly what we're going to do to it I'm going to take this bottle frame off here and we'll fit the battery unit down in that position there then we've got the problem of running this cable over to the front wheel and I don't like unsightly cables so I'll have to think of a neater way of putting that cable so that's that and the next thing we're going to do is put the wheel in loosen the brakes off so you can get the wheel out that makes a start and then turn the bike over 
Right, now take the wheel out, undo the quick release, and we should be able to take the wheel out. That's the wheel out. Now we've got to offer up the, the new replacement electric wheel, and you have to remember that the, the cable has to go on the right hand side of the bike, not the left hand side, so we're going like that, aren't we? So it's got to fit in like that. Now to get the wheel to fit centrally in the forks, you may have to adjust the washers uh, on the axle here and I had to take some off of this side and put them on this side to get it to fit correctly but uh, you do get some spare washers in the kit if you need them here um, I shan't actually need them and there's a spanner as well in there and then the object is you've got to get it to sit nicely in the fork so it, the wheel's central now you want to make sure this little locking thing here which locks on the shaft also fits down in the slot to stop the shaft from turning on the frame so I should be able to offer that up, and that goes in nicely. Uh, before I do that, let me just show you, if you want to change the washers or take the nut off, this little rubber shroud here, you can take this off. You can take it right off if you want to. It goes over the plug like this, look. So you can take the, the nut and washers off to change it around. So that's not a problem. That will come off easily. Anyway, we've got the washers in the right place, and it's important to note that you must have... Uh, the locking ones in that position so they sit nicely in the frame and then the actual locking washers themselves are on this side to tighten up so having done that we should be able to tighten the wheel up now the problem is on this bike uh, the wheel is rubbing and when I look closely it's these dome bolts and they're rubbing on these bolts here now these bolts were put in originally for panniers which we don't use a front pannier so what I'm going to do is take that out because they are actually touching this dome bolt and stopping you getting the smooth rotation so I'm just going to remove those those bolts quickly and get those out of the way if you've got a front pannier on it won't occur because the bolt won't go through as far enough but because the pannier is not on there the bolt is sticking into the wheel so we get those out of the way and now it turns freely uh, the other thing I noticed was when I was putting it on even with that done uh, these domed heads here were still rubbing on the inside of the fork and uh, causing it to go off centre and that's why I had to take a washer off the other side and put it on this side to move it away so to speak so now I've got that in you should be able to tighten the nuts up making sure that the locking washers I'll just take that off and show you it's important to have this locking washer on there. If you look, there's a slight indentation inside the fork end, and if you just put that nut and tighten it up, it won't tighten properly, and it will cause problems later. So you must have a locking washer there to bring the nut out a bit so that it tightens properly. And that, that applies on both sides. Just put that one on. Same on the other side. Make sure the locking washer's in the right position. This sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. <laughs> it, and it's more complicated trying to film it as well to show people what you're doing. It's not as easy as you think actually, trying to do this. Uh, trying to get the pictures and do the job and think what you're saying. You know, there's a lot of time and effort goes into making these videos, I can tell you. It taxes your brain a bit. Make sure it's running freely. I haven't tightened them up yet. And then, get your spanner, there's a spanner in the kit by the way if you haven't got one and it's a, a closed type ring spanner it's handy to take this with you on the road when you go because if you get a front wheel puncher you probably won't have a spanner to fit that large nut in your saddlebag um, because normally you are quick release so you need this and obviously on this side that spanner fits like that, but on the other side where the wire is, you've got to poke, take that little rubber boot off and poke that over um, over the cable and get it on. But I'm just going to use an open-ended spanner for this job. I'm just going to tighten the nuts up on the end of the wheel and hopefully I'll still get nice free rotation. It's okay so far. And make sure the wheel's nice and central in the forks. The brakes will have to be adjusted, obviously, to accommodate the, the new rim. Don't over tighten it, but make sure it's tight enough. You don't want the wheel falling out, do you? That would be uh, an unhappy experience. Now that's the wheel in place, and it spins quite nicely, so there's not a problem there. I won't do the brakes on the camera because you won't want to see that. That's been covered a hundred times before. One important thing I, I failed to mention, uh, when you're putting the wheel in, 
make sure that the, the, the slot where the cable comes out goes towards the handlebars, not downwards. It must come up where the, ca the cable runs up. So down in the position I've got the bike, so I've got the bike upside down, but it's got a point downwards with the bike upside down or upwards with the bike upright, if you see what I mean. So the cable goes up towards the handlebars. It must not go the other way. It's got to go that way for it to work properly. So having done that, we'll just slide this boot on top like that to make it nice and neat and that's the wheel done and sorted. So now it's just a simple job of putting the battery pack on, connecting it all up and, and then setting the Bluetooth controller, which is a bit I'm more worried about actually. Mm -hmm.